hypocritical aspect of that is our churches are filled with same gender loving people. This is a wake up call. If every gay person in our church is left, or those who have an orientation or a preference or an inclination or fantasy, if everyone left, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have a church. It's like you're judging the person, aren't you? Aren't you? Well, to me, I just I'm not I'm not the one to judge and say, you know, who's bad and who's good. Otherwise, you'd have to go through everybody, you know, every, every one of us and say, well, you know what, I got some pride, or I've got, I, I had an evil thought the other day. Those are sins too. I don't know that God is judging sins on different levels, but we pick out that one. So, I mean, our message, if, I mean, you know, if you listen to my message, they're about lifting people up, and so it's not. I mean, I really talk about the. The thing I appreciate about you most is that you operate in good faith. Mm -hmm. uh, you're honest, you're transparent, and about your struggle with these things mm -hmm. and about your convictions about well, these Well, it's things. a complex issue. It's a real complex issue, and it was in the Bible days. Sexuality versus spirituality. Paul spends a lot of time wrestling back and forth trying to understand, uh, should a woman wear her head covered? Is, you know, uh, should you cut your hair? I mean, they grappled back then, and we're grappling now because we are humans, and we are flawed, and we are not God. In spite of our human differences that range from race, ethnicity, religious belief, to culture, with this proclamation, we possibly usher in a new international epoch where the most disinherited and weak can find hope and partnership in promotion of their human rights. This could be the day that intolerance and bigotry begin to die, the inglorious death that these foes deserve. Hi, I'm G. Craig Lewis of EX Ministries, and we're here with another episode of The Exposition. This is our ninth episode, and I just want to say thank you so much for your support and all of your questions. We're trying to deal with different things, but I think this is our uh, second to the last episode for this first season. Uh, we're going to do 10 episodes, so um, we'll be dealing with a very important topic today something that is very, um, I guess, uh, well overlooked a lot in a lot of churches and a lot of circles. Uh, but first, I want to just introduce you to my guest. Um, uh, we have Jay Bryan. Uh, how you doing, Jay? Great, Pastor Jay. Um, he's a rapper and a minister, um, does both of them very well. Um, and we also have our media mogul uh, who's in tune with the whole uh, gospel music industry, Miss Carmina Barnett. How you doing, Carmina? You forgot to mention that I'm a rapper as well. I'm good. Yeah. You know, there is a spoken word piece somewhere in the archives, somewhere that Carmina might have done around Christmas time. But anyway, let's do that. <laughs> Episode nine, uh, we'll be dealing with today um, uh, homosexuality in the church. So we've got a lot of questions today, Pastor G. So let's start here. What is God's attitude? towards homosexuality? Well, let's just clarify that God is against all sin first, right? So uh, we will be deal dealing with homosexuality today, but God is against sin, period. It, it is what separates us from him, right? So let's look at it like this. Sex outside of marriage is sin, and because biblical marriage consists of male and female, homosexuals are practicing immorality, right? If you look at 1 Corinthians 10 and 8, it says, neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed and fell in love, I'm sorry, and fell in one day three and 20,000. 20, so what, is, what we want to make sure we understand is fornication in and of itself is, is wrong, meaning sex outside of marriage is not, it's not right, it's sin. Um, then you add that same sex attract, attraction, male to male, female to female, it's a perverted version of what God created to begin with. So we just have to make sure that we, you know, as a church, we're consistent with that. Um, besides the fact that in order for any of us to get here, we would need the seed from the man and then we would need the womb from the woman. Right. That's just standard biology. Right. <laughs> OK. So but, but, but definitely we want to make sure that we have the understanding that God is against all sin. Yeah. And a lot of times 
you know, when you try to deal with this subject, the first thing people come up with is, well, what about the other sins? Well, <laughs> we know about the other sins too. Right. Uh, that's one thing we do here at ABC is we Absolutely. teach a balanced word where all sins are covered uh, or dealt with, but we want to make sure, you know, people understand we're not picking at homosexuality as, you know, um, like it's uh, different in right. a way, but we're just saying that this particular message is about that. And another thing you got to know about, you know, fornication and those things, you know, you're talking about sins where procreation can take place that leads to abortion, mm -hmm. that leads to unwanted children. When you have unwanted children, they grow up feeling unwanted. Then you've got the issues in our society, uh, whether it's murder and all the other sins. So we're talking about, you know, a sin uh, when you're talking about fornication and adultery, you're talking about sins that can produce you know, see that can cause future sins and future turmoil. So, um, you know, we got to look at this because this is a serious issue, especially uh, nowadays in the body of Christ, it's an issue. And then also homosexuality is anti-creation. And right. God created them male and female and blessed them and called them Adam uh, in the day that they were created, according to the Bible. And so if God made a male and female, said this is the order, this is the way it should go, Anything that opposes that or anything that's against that or tries to change that is anti that, anti. which is anti. This is where we get the term antichrist. The Bible says there are many antichrists in the earth in the last days. That's how you're going to know it's the last days, many antichrists. Well, we're talking today about an antichrist, which is homosexuality, because it's anti procreation. It's anti God's order and it flips and changes God's original intent for mankind. Mm -hmm. Well, then a person that has made the choice to be homosexual and they're living in that lifestyle, actively practicing as a homosexual, can they be a Christian? Well, to practice Christianity, you, you must first desire to be to be like Christ. Right. That's 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 in the definition. That, Christianity that's, that's is a derivative of Christ and you don't have Christian without Christ first. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so that and but 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 also keeping his commandments. So a person that practices a sinful lifestyle um, it's not living. They're not living as a Christian. So, again, as we stated, we're, we're, we're speaking about homosexuality, but that's not the only sin that separates you from the God. That's not from God. And that's not the only sin that will that'll cause you to be in a lifestyle that will ultimately give you judgment to hell for eternity. So, yes, um, it's the same as a murderer, but murderers are not marching saying I want to kill at will. Murderers are murderers are not marching or or protesting at Capitol Hill for legalities to be applied to the murderous lifestyle. <laughs> in most cases, if, if you've murdered somebody, because let's, let's, let's think about it as extreme, that we're always told as a church that, you know, we treat homosexuality again as this separate entity. Well, murder is pretty extreme. There's no coming back from killing somebody, right? So let's take that. So people who normally kill people don't normally go and just, you know, parade about about it. You know, they normally go into hiding or they go on the run go to or prison. they try to cover it up. Mm -hmm. Then if they're caught, they go to jail for it. So we have sins that we see that are extreme where people are um, dealt with as far as consequence, be it a punishment due to law or be it a punishment due to just God making sure that you reap what you've sown into that particular sin. Well, so homosexuality is the same thing. So as Pastor was touching on, you can't get anything from the action of homosexuality. And I, I believe Pastor will touch on it later, but feeling a way and acting on it is two different things. So we just have to make sure we stay, you know, you didn't, you, you didn't answer the question at all. What well, can a can a practicing homosexual be a Christian? No. <laughs> I mean, you went to another city, another state. No. Got on a plane, flew to another country, then no. came back and then said no. Okay. No. <laughs> You okay. cannot okay. practice homosexuality and, and, and still say you are a Christian because that wouldn't be being like Christ. There you go. Help us out, Pastor. <laughs> Help us out. <laughs> I love it, though. That's, that's yeah. what makes him a great rapper. But um, the very reason a person, <laughs> the very reason a person practices the lifestyle suggests that they uh, are void of God's spiritual fruit. So that's what we have to look at. We right. got to look at the why. That's mm -hmm. what people never want to do. They always want to, you know, assess the action, assess the consequence. But what is the why? And I love, you know, that's one reason I love our church again. Man, I keep putting our church out there, but I love ABC because we're a why church. Right. We're going to find the source of the why 
hey, when you deal with the why, then you can deal with changing it right. and fixing it, you and know? Fixed. And so the mm-hmm. homosexual, um, uh, we got to figure out why they avoid of God's spiritual fruit. Why are they looking outside of God's natural order to get something, you know, the, the, the need to get that, that, that suggests that, you know, the very fact that they're trying to get that outside of God tells me that they aren't in God or in Christ. Right. Okay. So we can't say you're a Christian, but you're finding what you're looking for outside of his commandment or outside of his desire or outside of his order. Right. Right. Doesn't that make sense? So mm-hmm. the issues in their lives that cause them to desire to live against their own nature means that they have not been regenerated by God's spirit. Period. So to call yourself a Christian really means to be Christ like because once he comes to live in you, you have been regenerated or regened. As I like to say, yep. that your insides have changed. You know, mm-hmm. uh, the Bible says, therefore, uh, second, uh, second Corinthians five and seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old mm-hmm. things have passed away. Behold, all things have come new. Mm-hmm. Behold means look and see, look at it. There's something different about this. Right. So that difference is what makes me a Christian. I believe unto the saving of my soul. I believe unto the washing and the regeneration of the word took place in me. And so now I'm new. I'm brand new. So to say, can a homosexual be a Christian would mean, can you put old uh, wine in new skins, basically? Mm -hmm. And it it just doesn't work out that way. Uh, But you got to always look at the why. Why is this person even trying to be homosexual and a Christian? That's the most important question. So then our next question is, what about the church? How should we confront homosexuality? Should we just look the other way? Should we choose not to address it? What should we do? Um, well, we, we definitely feel that the church should address all sin, right? Um, so how will the people know except they hear from the preacher? This is mm-hmm. Bible. So what is preaching if it's not, you know, addressing sin of the people or, or um, that are hearing it? So if you look at Romans 10 and 14, it says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Or how shall they hear without a preacher? So, of course, the church should absolutely talk about homosexuality because it is a sin along with every other sin. Um, so if if how do how do we know that God created male and female? Right. Mm-hmm. This is defined in the Bible. How do we know that procreation is supposed to take place between a male and a female? This is defined in the Bible. How do we know what true marriage is? It's defined by the Bible. So this is the uh, this is the job of the church. Um, but but. The responsibility is on the person, as Pastor was just saying about, hey, do you want that? Do you accept that responsibility? Because, you know, claiming Christ is one thing, but actually following through with the lifestyle is a whole nother as well. Yeah. And you got a, a, a song, probably one of my favorite songs that you've ever done. Uh, uh, P.A.D. Preaching Ain't Dead. Preaching Ain't Dead. <laughs> and you talked about this very thing. Yeah. Um, d- describe that song. What was you talking about in that song? Uh, because you hear it a lot, even from rappers, from singers or the people who are supposed to be ambassadors for Christ in the entertainment world. Um, they 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 hear from audiences a lot that everything doesn't have to be church. Everything doesn't have to be so preachy. Well, yeah, if we're spreading the good news of Christ, it's it's preaching, right? Mm-hmm. It's proclaiming, it's proclamation. So that I was just inspired to say, no, preaching ain't dead. It was my own stand up for the church in a sense to say, this is how I arrived to the faith. Mm-hmm. This is how I came to understand the do's and don'ts, the rights and wrongs, the lefts, the terms and all those things. This is how I arrived here. So preaching ain't dead. And in a sense, you know, I, I get made fun of because P.A.D. is pad. That's my landing. My landing at the end of the day is the preach word brings me back every single time. Well, so preach. that's what the concept was. Oh, man. Told y'all he was a good rapper. <laughs> but they, they thought I was playing. <laughs> oh, y'all gonna leave Jay Pride alone, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was just go to flow it. <laughs> and then um, when sin goes unaddressed, it will flourish. That's the issue of the majority of the churches right. now. Right. It's because sin, the devil has found a way to cripple the pastor's ability to preach against sin. Okay. Usually he'll either get caught up in a relationship with somebody, or a illicit relationship with somebody in the audience. His wife got a stranglehold on his testicular fortitude and she won't let him stand up and say nothing. <laughs> uh, you know, the choir got a, a dude wearing women's pumps and his hair is pressed on one side mm-hmm. and rollers on the other side. 
And then you got the musicians playing in the club the night before service, still got the hand stamp while he's on the organ. You know, you got all of these ways, you got all these different ways where compromise has come in and snatched the pastor's ability to stand strong. Mm -hmm. I mean, the minute that is, that is, uh, uh, the minute he's compromised, homosexuality finds its way into that ministry. And it's always homosexuality because that is the image of the devil. I talked about it in my video, uh, Mother of All Gods, where I talked about Lucifer, Lucifera, mm -hmm. which was the, is the nature of Lucifer as he appears as male and female. We know that from Incubus and Succubus. And there's always a, a yin and a yang, like you mentioned the other week, and a, a Shiva and Kali, right. and all of these fem male, female counterparts as he tries to have a dual or duality, dual existence, mm -hmm. where as God comes from the male standpoint as a man or uh, his son, uh, Jesus Christ, and there is no duality there because the duality is reserved for the woman to be married in the earth to the man there. And so you got to get that video to understand all of that. But at the same time, when, when, when this compromise comes into, into the church, uh, it's, um, the homosexuality is going to come because the homosexuality is the ultimate image of anti-creation or anti-Christ. Right. And so it's going to come in and it's going to parade itself to show that there is no regeneration. There is no power in change. And there is no like the like the Bible says they will have a um, a form of godliness, but deny, deny the power, power. And, and that's what it is. It's a mm -hmm. denial of the power of change, mm -hmm. and it's. But I guarantee you, it's because the preach word isn't potent because something has gotten the preacher to where he can't stand up and preach it. So if it's, if it goes unaddressed, it's going to flourish uh, because the truth is what makes us free. And so right. the devil's right. job is to try to stop truth, mm -hmm. stop the truth in the church, stop the truth from being preached so that no one will be made free. Everyone will be carrying around their old man in the church. And then you got a church full of dead bodies. Yeah. Then you got the church of Sardis or, the, you know, the Revelations church or the churches that are just dead right. because there's no life in there because the life is going to come from the truth being preached. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, then what should the church's response be to those who are in that lifestyle, they're coming into our churches now. So what should our response be? Well, I, I've been blessed to have two sons, right? So I have to make the choices to protect them from that lifestyle or any sin of, uh, of any sort, right? That are sinful or dangerous. Mm -hmm. So what I wouldn't want them to, to see is a sinful lifestyle approved in the church. So no sin should be allowed to just casually be, you know, in the church um, and then un, unapproached or uncounseled, if you will. Um, so that's no different than if we are aware that there's a married couple and some men are aware that another man has stepped out on his wife or vice versa. That's not something that we would just allow to float around. Right. Or if we know of a single man who's actively pursuing women in general, married or not married, um, just for sexual relations. We can't stand idly by and allow our children to just do that in the church. Then they, they grow up with the stigma that the church isn't a safe place to go to when and indeed it is. So we just have to make sure that we're careful with that um, as far as that lifestyle or any sinful lifestyle. No, we, we can't allow that to take place. in the church. Yeah. And I mean, Satanists, you know, they're allowed to not allow Christians to come in their church. Right. right. Masons don't allow non Masons in their meeting. Right. But the thing a lot of people don't know is, you know, these these that I'm naming, they're not 501c3 like the church is. So the church, a lot of these churches that are 501c3, the government owns them or the government, because they, you know, uh, are, are a government entity, mm -hmm. they don't have as much say over who's coming in as they, as they uh, should or as they, as they would had they not gone the 501c3 route. Mm -hmm. That's why I didn't do it. That's why I'm not 501c3, just because, I mean, I'm not going to give the government that uh, wedge into the church over tax exemption, I'll just pay the tax. I mean, right. I, you right. know, I mean, it's, it, it would it would behoove me or be worth it to just pay the tax, so I don't have to open my doors and allow a homosexual marriage to take place. Right. This is what that what we're seeing happening overseas, and it's going to happen even more in America through five hundred one c three. Is a lot of these homosexuals are going to demand to be married, and because you're a government entity, you're claiming their tax exemption, and you're taking government funds to help. Uh, build or, or help fund your programs and different things in your church, mm -hmm. you're going to be obligated 
to, you know, um, oblige them, uh, the homosexual or the lesbian that want to get married or whatever. But, you know, for us, it's ridiculous to even think that because we're Christians. So as Christians, that's against our manual for Christianity. So right. our manual for Christianity is the Bible. So mm -hmm. if you go against our manual of operation, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're going against our our whole operation. You're basically saying our operation is null and void because we should ignore the rules. Mm -hmm. We don't do that on our jobs. People don't do that with their employers. With these all these women with these sexual harassment cases and all this stuff, right. they're going tit for tat down the, the the operations manual and showing you, hey, this is the way we operate as a company. You mm -hmm. don't operate this way, then you'll be terminated. Yep. Well, as a church, we operate through the Word of God. That's our manual of mm -hmm. operation. So. We're going to we're going to adhere to it and stick to it. So we shouldn't have to go against that to oblige someone who is in, in a lifestyle that's not approved of by the Bible or the gospel that we teach. Uh, so, yeah, you, you look out for that, though. A lot of pastors need to look out for that. I'll just act, well, I guess you kind of said it, but I was, I was going to ask that question. What, what, what do we say to those leaders who are actively dealing with something like that? So. Um, whether it's by confession or by hearsay and, and you have the conversation, however, the information gets to the leadership, uh, then how, how do you advise, if you would advise leadership, how do they deal with it? As like, far like as, what question? Like so question. leadership and, so leadership dealing with homosexuality in a church or one of their leaders are actually in that lifestyle. How, how should leaders deal with it? Well, I mean, it, it, there needs to be a conversation. Um, and, you know, they need to be, informed or told, you know, that was well, especially in leadership, you, you're not qualified to lead if we are going by the manual. Right. And that's the issue, uh, mm -hmm. Jay. Uh, a lot of people, they, they got so many, <laughs> they're doing so many things against the operation manual right. that a dude that's practicing their lifestyle can easily say, well, okay, if you're going to do something about me, you need to do something about A, B, C, and D and go down the list. Right. You need to do something about the choir director. You need to do something about the, 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 the dude that's uh, picking up trash in the, in the, in the, right. in the front, it's just you know, an infestation. Mean, yeah, you, you, you got to deal with all of that. So that's why it's important to stick to the manual all the way. That way you can sit someone down and say, Hey, this is what we teach. This is what you live. I think you ought to find either another place to fellowship or let us help you out of that lifestyle if that's what you're willing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, but I, one thing I found out when people are caught in something, yeah, then, you know, helping them, you're going to be very limited because now you're dealing with a victim's vow. Yeah. You caught me. So let me get it right. <laughs> you know, they just start that. But then a couple of months later, when they're feeling good, you know, right. uh, when everything's okay, they're going to go back to it because conviction didn't change them. Gotcha. You know, conviction will change a person on their own. They don't have to be caught in it. They, conviction will come and you will catch yourself. I mean, am I telling the truth? Anybody, anybody in it? See, you know I'm a preacher. Any of these cameramen? Any of y'all been through this? Any of y'all? Hey, glory. <laughs> I'm a preach. I know we got a fancy <laughs> set here, but let me tell you something. <laughs> but seriously, though, conviction yeah. ought to speak to you and ought to change you. Nobody should have to catch you and got yeah. a cell phone picture of you and ooh, look, and then you weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth on Sunday, and they wondering why is he yelling and crying like somebody is killing him? Well, he got caught. Well, it's not gonna have the same uh, long-term effect on that person. They need to come to conviction. Well, what are we talking about now? We're talking about it being preached. Mm -hmm. Because if it's preached, if the preach word is preached, conviction comes. Yep. So then you don't have to go catch the deacon hiding in the balcony. <laughs> we saw the video of the dude watching porn in church know, on his crazy. cell phone yep. in the balcony. Just mm -hmm. That wouldn't that's happen crazy. if it was being preached. If the preach word was preached with conviction right. and it was causing people to be convicted. Right. And when you're convicted, man, ain't nobody got to come to you. The man. Holy Ghost will thump you upside your head and tell you, say, hey, but you better stop. Amen. And you'll feel it. And true sorrow will come that will lead to repentance. Mm -hmm. and, and nobody has to catch it. That's good stuff right there. We have to take a very quick break. But of course, visit us online at exministries.com and give us your questions. Share your views. We'd love to hear from you. We'll be back with more talking about homosexuality in the church. Whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you're a man, whether you're a woman, this is a message about the diabolical plot of the enemy. Did you know the devil hates you? He hates you because you look like God. 
You were made in his image and in his likeness. You were made higher than all the animals. So it makes the devil mad just to see you in the likeness of God. So he wants to change what you look like. When it comes to kids, time equals influence. How much time do you spend with them? And how much time do they spend surfing the internet and watching TV? Well, the same Bible that says do not kill, do not steal, and do not commit adultery says that two men ought not lie together. Two women, it is unseemly for two women. God made them male and female, and he blessed them. And I have to be committed to walking in the spirit of love mm. and humility and never as an authority. And the Bible is not a book that's an attack on gay people. It's not a, a, a book written to attack gay people. That's not what the Bible is. That with you, I, I agree with you. Yeah. And that's horrible. Mm -hmm. It is horrible that we have made it where the Bible is a homophobic manual. That's not what the Bible is. You with Sister Sister, gospel singer Ty Tribbett said that he believes the black church is too militant against homosexuality. He even believes that it's natural. That's my only thing. I'm not saying that homosexuality is not natural. I agree with you that it is. There are several things that come naturally that's not that are not God's best. And he said, there are certain things that can trigger the not so great natural in all of us, but is it God's will or God's best for us, period? And I don't condemn homosexuality, but I do believe it's not God's best lifestyle for us, according to the And we're back with more of the exposition, talking about homosexuality in church. And we've kind of touched on this a little bit in the first half, but I want to really stretch out on it this time. And let's ask the question, should the church view homosexuality as a greater sin than the other ones? Sins such as infidelity, theft, or as you mentioned before, murder. Um, well, and I'm gonna have to read this. And I know some people are wondering, why, 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 why are y'all reading? And she's asking questions. Well, Carmina gets these questions together for us and then just gives them to us. And so we have notes and different things uh, that we try to prepare so that we just won't sit up here and ramble. And then also <laughs> we have the word of God okay. and that's important to me. Um, I, I mean, we could just have a couch conversation, <laughs> but I want the word of God involved in it in anything I'm doing because that's yeah. what's going to bring the clarity. I mean, mm -hmm. none of us are smart. Okay. Not, not in the word. No one is. So everyone's a bootleg scholar. Everyone is going off something that was already written and said Being before. Yeah, yeah, that's all mm -hmm. we are. So we don't want to sit up here and look intelligent like we know something. We want the word to speak for us. So I just want to say that. I don't know why that was for somebody. But, uh, hey. anyway, preachers love to say that, don't hey. they? That was for somebody. Yeah. Somebody grabbed it. Somebody did. <laughs> but uh, uh, back to your question, Carmina. Um, yes. Should the church view homosexuality as a greater sin than others? <clears throat> the Bible never said, and I don't know what, where people got this from, but the Bible never said all sins were equal. Okay. Um, the Bible even tells us that there are some sins that are against the body. There are some sins that are not unto death. There are different levels of sin. Now, all sin leads to death or, or, or will lead to hell ultimately without repentance. Right. But there are some sins that don't uh, have consequences, aren't unto death immediately or don't have consequences right away. And so there are just different variances of sin. But this question that you ask centers around the expression of sin. And that's what the homosexual, um, the issue with homosexuality is, the blatant expression of it or the expression of sin. When a person flaunts their sinful lifestyle practice, right. it is a blatant act of defiance against what is being taught, right. if the word is being taught. So if the word is being taught, you come in and you are flaunting it. You know, homosexuals, you know, there are different kinds. There are some secret closet ones or some that are reserved, trying to hide it or whatever. But eventually their effeminate behavior, their two-way behavior, whatever it is, is going to show. It's going to come out. You're going to see it. And then you will be flaunting that lifestyle practice in a place where we are teaching or supposed to be teaching against that lifestyle practice. So if a murderer could walk around with a bloody axe with hair on it, then you could, right. then we could say, hey, man, he's flaunting his, his murderous lifestyle. <laughs>
<laughs> that's so stupid. But that's what it that's what it would take, you right. know. If he he fly, right? Or a dude walk in church, a pimp come in. Right. He got just, a hat with two a, of them. <laughs> got it. Got a feather in his hat and uh, kicks <laughs> with, with 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 fish in them. And he comes stepping into the church. You know, he's like, dude, you flaunting your lifestyle. You can't <laughs> right. pimp. You can't. Be pipped out <laughs> right. in the same two. <laughs> so it's the same with homosexual. I'm trying to think of some ways to equate it. Yeah. But the homosexual comes, and if he's snapping and papping, <laughs> to, you know, doing his thing, what they do. <laughs> if he's, you know, not to not to make fun of him, but you know right. what I mean. If yeah. he's blatantly flamboyant and right. and all of that, then he's basically defying what is being taught. Right. So he's being now he's being seen as uh, someone who is purposely right. throwing I use this phrase throwing shade at what is at what the word of God says or right. what God it's expects. Like, it's basically just open rebellion. Yeah, right. open rebellion. Yeah. Just you know, and so that's where it becomes an issue when a person flaunts it. This hinders the message and causes others to be discouraged. Okay, mm -hmm. so some sins carry greater stakes and consequences than others. Even First Corinthians six and eighteen says, "Flee fornication." Now it's going to put fornication in a different light than other sins. It says every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. So the Bible is letting us know that there is a different consequence and a different status that this particular sin has because it's against the body. Right. And then you have to look at it like this. Who's who's actually coming to church to compare sin? <laughs> and if you are coming to churches to compare sin, then you're in trouble already anyway, right? <laughs> right. I mean, that just means that you want the validation instead of the actual change. Yeah. So I can't come in and then hear the preacher say, hey, don't do this, don't do that. And then I'm sitting back like, yeah, but what did you do? Right. Well, obviously, that's a human being, right? Yeah. God has granted the same grace to the preacher as he did. That's going back to the preacher ain't dead. That's the whole point. It's not to say Pastor G is not a human being, right? Mm -hmm. He hasn't done everything correct. So because he hasn't done everything correct doesn't exclude or exempt, exempt him from being able to tell me what's incorrect. Mm -hmm. If that's what God has called him to do and if I've decided to submit under his leadership. And, and that goes for anybody else. So we, we have to stop that as well by letting those who want to openly practice this lifestyle just use that as a way to escape the consequence or the responsibility of accepting that it just goes against what God what God has created. Yeah, and another thing to that, I mean, you can't even be a parent if, if you're going to take that road. I mean, right. if you're going to say, then if you've ever done it before, you <laughs> right. can't tell nobody to do it. Not did, to do it. Did then. you do it, daddy? Right. Your kids yeah. will be in your face every time. <laughs> right. Yeah. Boy, you, uh, did you clean your room? I heard you didn't clean. Grandma said you didn't clean your room right. a couple of times. I mean, you know, so, so, so <laughs> we're not going to even do that. I mean, right. as a matter of fact, it should be the opposite. My concern for my kids to do better than me makes me want to correct them from Absolutely. doing the stuff that I used right. to do. So because I used to do it and I know the consequences of it and I know what it, uh, the dangers of it, then I, they should definitely listen to me and what mm -hmm. I'm saying. And I want to be able to tell them. So just because I've done it before doesn't disqualify me from saying it. Right. And the bottom line when we're talking about preaching is they're not my words anyway. Right. So I'm just repeating the words right. of God. I'm repeating the words of Christ. I'm mm -hmm. repeating the words of those before me, the great cloud of witnesses, whatever. So you can't hold me to man. While I'm preaching it, I'm trying to live it. Right. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. So they're not my words. So don't come at me because the Bible said your lifestyle is is, is, exactly. is unacceptable. It sounds like it's the issue is authority, too, though, wouldn't you say? I mean, obviously. Not. So one thing is God. God says it is just is what it is, whether right. you decide to live up to it or live it or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything he says completes and it, it never returns void. The Bible mm -hmm. teaches that. But even those who we have in leadership positions or in the teaching position, uh, which would be leadership. If, if I'm telling you as the authority that God is using in this moment that, that that you shouldn't be doing that, how do you question that authority? So it's a rebellion against authority as well, it sounds like. Back to the home. I mean, yeah. that, that, that same father or mother that's telling the kid, don't do this, even yeah. though I've did it before, you don't do it. That kid yeah. respects that because that's their parent. Well, right. they learn that respect. They learn that uh, uh, authority in the home mm. and then it translates into a fellowship or even on their job or just different places where they have to submit under leadership and so they don't have to question everything that's told to them and i'm right. not saying don't do your own homework as far as the bible is concerned but i'm saying you don't just question leadership because you think leadership may 
be doing what they're telling you not to do. You right. see what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you started talking about parents and things like that, because that leads to my next question. How should parents handle teaching their children about homosexuality? We know they're seeing it at school. We know they're seeing it on TV. We know they're hearing it in the music. So how does a parent handle that? Right. Um, I, I think they should, we, we I'm, I'm a parent myself, mm -hmm. we should be honest with our children. And then when they get of age, um, they should be taught as, at, alongside the Bible, using biblical principle, we should teach them. So sex education should come from the home. Exactly. Period. I, I can't rely on another male to teach my sons what, what it's about. I can't rely on another woman to teach my daughter. Um, me, and my, me and my wife come together and we collectively come up with a plan under my leadership how we're going to give them that information. And then we would expect them to abide by with prayer. I mean, it's going to take prayer. They're human beings. They're going to get out there. They're going to see things as as you just stated, music, TV, the mm -hmm. mall. I mean, mm -hmm. by the grace of God, we're homeschooling. So we have more control than the average person. So right. for the, especially for those who have their children in public school, mm -hmm. you got to make sure that you are on top of all of it beyond just the parent teacher conferences or picking somebody up from a basketball practice. Are you having conversations? Are you picking their brains? Mm -hmm. In this age, the information age, the, the internet age, <laughs> where it's at the click of a button or, or, or walking through Target. Um, and, and I've had those instances where we've seen somebody dressed, a, a male that had hair down to his, his ankles and different garbs on and things of that mm -hmm. nature. And I say, look at me. Do I dress like that? No. Okay. Then let me be the image that you want to emulate, not that image. And then as they get older, I'll explain what that is. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's just something that we definitely should take more responsibility on, not just relying on music or TV as those things. We, we need to teach our kids on, based on biblical principles. Yeah. And then they should also see it exemplified um, in the church. And that's why, you know, I'm a big advocate for homeschooling as well. I uh, wasn't able to homeschool my first two children, um, but they made it out by the grace of God. But things were different 10 years ago when they were in school. But now my youngest, uh, we're actually homeschooling him for that reason, because we want to control the culture right. of our child. Uh, yes, we want to control it, not just with teaching, but we want to control it even with the atmosphere of a church right. or a church that is, uh, where sound doctrine is, is being taught. Right. I think that's very important so that when a church stands on the word of God, the children can grow up under it. So then when you have a sex talk with them, mm -hmm. um, you have biblical uh, uh, you, you can, you know, bring the Bible, bring God's plan into it, and then it can be reiterated and reemphasized by the ministry that you're attached right. to. So it begins to create a culture, and that's mm -hmm. why fellowship is so important. It begins to create this whole culture where you're not hiding your kids in the house all the time mm -hmm. to try to protect them from stuff, but they can actually go out and, and or come here and be a part of a culture uh, where there are like-minded kids, like-minded parents, like-minded you know, uh, different ones, even in our co-op here, our homeschool co-op, we have the different mothers of the children to teach different sessions. And so, right. you know, it's just spread all around. Your wife is over the homeschool group. And so it's just, it, it, it begins to create this counterculture, right. which is what Christianity is. Hmm. And it brings people out of the world and brings them into, you know, a new mindset. Right. The issue comes is when we, you know, when churches is, is, is whack, and we don't even want to go as parents, but we want to <laughs> drag our kids to church. Right. We're forcing them to be in a church where there is no culture. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of churches and they have good praise and worship. Mm -hmm. They have good singing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they even have decent preaching, but there's no culture attached to it. Meaning, you know, people aren't growing up. There are no young people there. Right. Or the effeminate stuff has come in where, you know, because you needed a drummer so bad, you let a dude with two earrings sagging his pants on the drums. Well, he's on the stage. Now right. you just validated every boy that wants that effeminate look. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Yep. Or the homosexual. You needed somebody to sing so bad. So you let the homosexual lead. Well, now you validated every little boy that's effeminate. And you've given him someone to point to to say, that's who I'll be. And what you've done is you've undermined the culture. You know, and we have a strict culture here at ABC. I mean, we're, we're, we're pretty strong on it. You know, none of our men here wear earrings. Right. A, a boy will come in here and, and he ain't going to see no men wearing earrings. Ain't nobody sagging, showing their drawers. Ain't nobody, right. you know, nobody is flaunting the gangster thug look here. That right. would be ridiculous for the truth behind hip hop past to have <laughs> hip hop all over right. here. Amen. So we don't do that here. And, right. you know, we give you a couple of weeks, you come like that. You know, he's like, okay, he didn't know. But uh, brother, I need you to look around yeah. and see. We don't have brothers 
in here with dreads all down, slanging dreads and singing and all that. We, we don't do that here because we're creating a counterculture for these younger boys to grow up and see their image repeated back to them or the image that we want them to portray yeah. coming back to them. Yeah. Well, that, that does a lot because if a homosexual comes here or whatever, then he's going to feel, you know, a little some kind of way because ain't nobody looking like me, ain't nobody flaunting nothing, ain't nobody acting that way. Right. And, and we do that on purpose. And so when that is done, it's easier for a parent to have that conversation. You know, you don't wait till your son is best friends with one right. to try to tell him about it. You see what right. I'm saying? But if he's growing up in a counterculture, then it's it's almost understood. Right. It's almost, you know, we almost kind of know. Yeah, well, we don't really get down like that, you know, right. because none of the kids here really get down like that. That's just kind of the counterculture that we're a part of. Amen. So we've talked about God's attitude towards homosexuality. We've defined it. We've talked about how we as the church should deal with it, how it should be taught from the pulpit. But I think the final question that we need to address is, can a homosexual actually be delivered? Yes. Okay. And the reason why is because with God, all things are possible, right? We're talking about a redeemed people. We're talking about a, 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 a sin act caused an entire nation to sin. Then God decided to destroy that nation, and then he started it over. Now we're talking about what, what we understand to be an, an, a dispensation or a, a, a age of grace where God is saying, you know what? I want you guys to did, get it right. I remember when I was younger, um, just to talk about things being possible, all things being possible with God. I read a scripture and I think it's in either first or second Peter where it says one day is like a thousand to Jesus and like a thousand days is like one day to Jesus, meaning like he operates on a different time. In other words, what I may allow for a person as far as forgiveness, God automatically trumps that by light years. So all things are possible. So yes, there is deliverance for homosexuality for anybody who feels like there isn't. So with that being the case, deliverance from sin is God's specialty. So if a person truly des desires freedom from any sin, they can be set free. First John 1 and 19 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So anything from what you consider the smallest lie to, to the greatest of something like an act of murder. Now, there are natural consequences for natural things that you do as far as, a, you know, disobeying or going against the law of the land that we live in. But as far as forgiveness, yeah, you can be forgiven. You're just doing life in jail with that forgiveness. Right. It's the, it's the same. It's the same God today, yesterday and forevermore. So, yes, that, I think that's important to stress that we can all be forgiven. for. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to close this out uh, unless y'all add something else. Uh, I'm going to close you out. Got close it. this out with the, my answer to this uh, just kind of ended up being the. The, the summary of it. Summary. Um, yeah, summary. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was a good question, Carmina, because I get that question a lot of times. But I think the question should be changed a little bit. Okay. Uh, the question isn't whether a person can be delivered. The question is, uh, is that a person, uh, is that person in the right posture to be delivered from homosexuality? Now, basically, a person that practices this lifestyle is not just acting on natural urges but they are acting on a desire that is unnatural and, ab and uh, abnormal and abominable according to the Bible. Now, a homosexual may try to defend it and say it's this or it's that, but nature tells us that it's unnatural, okay? There's no way to say that it's not. You know, when you live in this lifestyle, you put your body at risk of death because, uh, you know, as far as men are concerned, because of the fluid transfers, the different things, I talk about it extensively in my Era Man videos, uh, it's just a dangerous lifestyle because it is, it is so unnatural. But because it's unnatural, this suggests that there is mental illness involved. So whenever a person is going against nature, then there is mental illness involved. Uh, it used to be uh, in the manual, the psych, psych, psychological manual uh, back when AIDS was called GRID, a gay-related immune deficiency, it was actually considered mental illness back then for a person to desire the same sex. It would be, it, you know, it means that something is wrong with your mind. I'm not saying that you're just crazy, but I'm saying there is a rewiring or a restructuring of your mind that has occurred to cause you to go after the same flesh or flesh that is the same as yours because that is, that is not God's plan or that is not nature's plan, okay? Um, so, their brain is wired to react to the same sex as the opposite sex. 
So deliverance can't just be done at an altar call or by the laying on of hands. And this is a mistake many, I've Thank seen you many yeah. homosexuals mm -hmm. leave the altar and right. laying on the hands or whatever, and then just expect, now I'm brand new, I can just go and everything's gonna be okay. Well, we're not just talking about a spiritual issue, we're talking about right. some rewiring in the natural realm of yeah. your brain. Right. We're talking about mm -hmm. a severe issue uh, uh, when it comes to this lifestyle. So deliverance just can't be done by that. A person must be remade in their mind to understand that their desire is abnormal and that the pleasure response mechanisms in their brain must be rewired. So we have a pleasure response mechanism that tells us that's why, you know, we try to protect our kids from violations, sexual violations and, right. and different things, because if this pleasure response thing is turned on at too young of an age, the, the child will grow up and become promiscuous trying to chase that because right. they'll associate that feeling with whoever did it. If it was a parent, then they'll associate it with love. If it was a relative or a friend, they'll associate it with, you know, something else and they'll keep seeking out that pleasure response. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so a person has to be remade in their mind and uh, transformed by the renewing of their mind is the way the Bible says uh, to understand that this desire is uh, abnormal and the pleasure response mechanism in their brain must be rewired. This takes a whole lot of time, patience, and much prayer. It is not going to happen on that altar. Okay, the beginning of it can start there, mm -hmm. but this is going to be a process. All right, and I want people to understand. You know, those that are dabbling in this lifestyle, this is a serious thing I'm talking about. Uh, coming out of this is very, very serious. So many people I know started to try to come out, and not many of them finished uh, because they can't finish the process. Uh, so many of them try to get out, mm -hmm. but they can't finish the process because they attend churches where homosexuality and immorality is not addressed or the order of God is not present. So you got to be in a church where this stuff is addressed. Mm -hmm. This stuff is not allowed That's in right. leadership right. and God's order has to be there. So you can't have a woman pastor. You can't have a woman, you know, authority. You can't have a woman controlling the man or the pastor. You got to have a strict authority because God only works through his order. OK, so uh, so many pastors today feel they need homosexuals for music or they are emasculated by their wives. So they don't have the fortitude to even stand against this spirit. So they're going to use the homosexual because of their talent. They're going to use them. So instead of really sitting them down uh, and trying to deal with them, you need them performing. And so you're going to sacrifice their well-being for, you know, better music in, in your congregation, which is sad. In order for true deliverance from sin to occur, any sin, mm -hmm. uh, a person must desire it to the point of making all the necessary changes in their lives. Mm -hmm. That's what people are leaving out. Mm -hmm. Folks don't want to go hard for deliverance. Right. They go hard for the job. Mm -hmm. They go hard for the money. Mm -hmm. But they don't want to go hard for deliverance. Right. Turning the TV off. No, nah, man, I can't go to the movies this year. Right. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Nobody wants to go hard like that for true deliverance. This may require separation from certain churches, certain family, and definitely separation from friends that accepted them in their previous state. Right. So if you had a friend that accepted you like that, mm -hmm. you can't be friends with them ever again. Right. <laughs> see, nobody wanna go this hard. Right. You, you, you literally, you, you can't, when you see them walking towards you, you gotta turn around and walk the other way. Mm -hmm. right. This is the only, this is the only way. Y'all better listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Many times a, a, a change of hobbies or even occupation is required to rebuild a person and restore them. And mm -hmm. this is even in your field, Carmen, a lot of guys uh, that do gospel music, most of the gospel music industry are homosexual. And these guys are approved of. They've been approved of all their lives since they were little. So they've been validated because of their talent and their ability. But right. then when they get to the point to where they want deliverance, they still want to sing. Right. Dude, if you want deliverance, you got to sit down and put the microphone. If yeah. you want deliverance from this, you can't be on that stage. Amen. I tell you, whenever some guy, God tell me, man, I've been delivered from it. Oh, you still performing and singing? Yeah, well then you ain't been delivered. Right. You're not gonna, how, how are you delivered from crack? How do you get off crack, but sleep in the crack house? Right. 
you can't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, even even when we were dealing with uh, uh I was, I was, somebody sent me a video of Kurt Franklin. He was with uh, what's her name, um, Kim Kardashian. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, brother, you publicly said you had a problem with 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 pornography, right? And now you with Kim Kardashian in a picture working out with her. See, this 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 stuff just boggles my mind. Right. Like, why would you dance close to the fire if you've already been burned mm -hmm. by it? And so, if you want true deliverance from these things, you got to get away from all the sources of it. Right. You got to go hard for it. Now, let me tell you this. Most folks can't do that mm -hmm. and they won't be delivered. First Corinthians six and nine says, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, which is homosexuals in this passage, right. nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, or those that like to party all the time, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. This is Paul teaching, saying none of these folks are going inherit to the, inherit the kingdom of God. Now, he says this, and this is the hope. He says, and such were some of you. <laughs> some of you in this church used right. to be like this. Some of y'all were effeminate. Some of y'all were homosexual. Some of y'all were practicing those lifestyles. Back then, false god worship was encompassed. Um, it encompassed same-sex relations. Right. That's the way you you would have to spill semen onto another man in order to show uh, 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 your reverence to certain Greek gods. Oh. And so when he's talking to them in Corinthians, he know what he's talking about. He said, y'all was idolaters, y'all adulterers, fornicators. Some of y'all were homosexual. He said, that were some of you. He said, but now ye are washed but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the spirit of our God. So there is definitely hope. The word just gave us that hope. Amen.